Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar on 30 June trust distributions. Today I will be running through what is required under the resolutions, what areas we need to be looking at, uh, any guidelines around this, um, any regulations around this, and then I'll at the end I'll be running through the Lightyear Docs Trust Distribution Resolution Minutes and showing you how it meets all the requirements and show you the end product and what you should actually do. And I'll have the Lightyear Docs trustee up and we'll refer back to that. So let's jump into the presentation and run through. Trust distributions, where should you start? Is it ATO guidelines on this? I know there's been a lot on this over the last several years and some cases in terms of around this, or is it the trust deed? The winner is the trust deed. This is the number one starting point. The deed provides the rules, the operations, and governance of the trust, and the powers of the trustees. It determines what the trust income is, what it's made up of, so what it constitutes, and how it, it, that income is to be distributed. Now, are there any regulations around this? There are, whilst there are some state-based trustee acts, it mostly falls down to the trustee. Those trustees acts refer really back to the powers and um, how a trustee must act. There's no legislation for trusts like there are is for companies, such as the Corporations Act. And as companies have replaceable rules, trusts do not have such items. So what can be distributed? The income of the trust. And that's neither accounting income nor is it taxable income. It is the income of the trust. How do we get that? We must refer to the trust deed. And it's calculated per the terms or the clauses within that deed and how it's allocated. In most cases, tax on trust income will be payable by the beneficiaries as we distribute that income to those beneficiaries and then it's payable at the beneficiary's tax rate, whether that's an individual tax rate, a company, etc. And it's determined by their sh each of those beneficiaries' share of the trust's income. So, and that comes down to the resolution that we make or the trustee makes each financial year. So the trustee will resolve to distribute a certain dollar amount, a certain percentage to each of the nominated beneficiaries. Sometimes that can be also the trustee. What's important is to remember that each and every trustee is unique. It's impacted by how it was set up, the clauses within it, the provider that you purchased it or the client purchased it from or their former accountant acquired or advisor purchased it from and the lawyer that the underlying lawyer who wrote that deed. Now, given that there are certain, uh, all sorts of deeds out there, just remember that our Lightyear Docs Trust Resolution Distribution Minutes do allow you to use them for any deed, but not just the Lightyear Docs deed. So you can go through and regardless of what you've got, you can complete them. Uh, there's also the opportunity if you want to, well, at any time to upgrade the deeds and you can use uh, the documents on the Lightyear Docs website to do this. What are the important, let's have a look at what are the important trustee clauses that we should be looking at. What clauses deal with the distribution of trust income? Income, of course. And that's not, as we've mentioned before, an easy determination. You can't just decide what it is. You need to read and understand what it states under the trust deed is income of the trust. Sometimes it's defined as net income of the trust. Sometimes the deed allows the trustee the ability to determine if a receipt is capital or income. That's right, the trustee to actually determine if a receipt is capital in nature or income in nature. Some deeds don't even define income, and I've seen this myself. So what then, what do we do? We must turn to any legislation, concepts, concepts of income, and any relevant case law. Now there is a definition of income of the trust estate under trust law that provides for the treatment of capital as income. Yes, one and the same, capital as income. But once again, you can only do that or use that definition if it is allowable under the deed. So you need to refer back to the deed. What's another one that's important? Distributions. Distributions normally tell a trustee that they must resolve each year to distribute the trust's income to the nominated beneficiaries 
Yes, nominated beneficiaries. It doesn't have to be all the beneficiaries named under the trustee. It's up to the discretion of the trustee to nominate beneficiaries and then put it within the resolution who those nominated are and what they will receive by a particular time. And what is that particular time? So the required date for the particular time each year is 30 June. However, the deed sometimes also specifies another earlier date. Note, capital gains can be 31 August, but only if they have for any dealt that haven't been dealt with by 30 June. So if at 30 June we resolve to give myself 50,000 in capital gains, then they can't be dealt with again at 31 August. So what take, takes precedent? The date in the deed does. So if you've got, it's not 30 June, once again, we refer back to the deed. The deed wins out again. Other important clause, beneficiaries. So we need to know who are the beneficiaries. So who can we distribute to or who can the trustee resolve to distribute? And the deed may name primary, but it also may name general or secondary beneficiaries. Secondary beneficiaries or general beneficiaries may be, say, uh, the children or related entities, related companies of the primary named beneficiaries and also default beneficiaries. Default are entitled to get any income where a valid distribution has not been made by the trustee. So have a, let's have a look at uh, our, uh, our family trust, for example, and who may be beneficiaries. Got our trust here, we've got dad, mum, or, or we might have mum by herself or dad by himself as named beneficiaries. And we might have the kids, they may be named or they just might be captured through secondary or general beneficiaries. So it might, the, the primary might be dad and mum, for example, and then it'll say, and our children, their children, our, their grandchildren, etc., etc. You might be have a backup company, and that will maybe included under secondary or general beneficiary. So captured through related entities or related companies of the primary beneficiaries. In this case, being mum and dad, or with my name, name specifically name a charity, or it may be charities is also often captured under general or secondary beneficiaries, saying that. It can be a, to a charitable organisation. So let's have a look at uh, distribution resolutions and what's required. First, we need to know what are trust distribution resolutions. They're resolutions made by the trustee. Yes, by the trustee, not the beneficiaries or any other party to the trust or anyone else. It's by the trustee. Per the trust deed to resolve who the trust income is to be distributed to on or before year end. Why are they so important? They assist with tax planning process. It's an opportunity to make this process mandatory with clients. What better excuse than to get in clients' records up to date, ensure that all the finances are up to date so you can make a valid resolution around either dollars or percentages to be distributed. And if a valid resolution is not put in place and there are beneficiaries who are not presently entitled to income, then the trust may end up getting taxed at the highest rate of tax. We do not want that to happen. So we need to ensure that we have appropriate resolutions in place so that we can avoid that happening for our clients. What is the format of resolutions? What format does it have to be? And, and does it have to be in writing? And what should it include? If you go refer to the ATO's website, it actually states that they don't have to be in writing. They can be verbal but the trust deed may differ for this and may actually say that it is required to be in writing. So you can once again, refer back to that great deed. Regardless of what the ATO is stating there, there does need to be some evidence and, they, and the ATO does point to that, says there needs to be evidence that an actual resolution was made before 30 June. So all I can say is it really needs to be documented. And the best way to do this is using a specific document such as the light year trust distribution resolution minutes to record it and record evidence of such. This also helps to avoid any disputes with the ATO or beneficiaries later on. So a beneficiary might say there was never a resolution made. Um, and if you've got a document in writing, then you've got proof of such. If the only requirement in relation in terms of needing to be definitely in writing is if you are to stream frank distributions or capital gains effectively, then the beneficiary needs to be specifically entitled, so specifically named. So 
it must be, and to do this, it must be recorded in writing in the records of the trust. What else is, so our dollars, is, are we required in the resolutions to say name specific dollars to our nominated beneficiaries? No, we're not, unless the deed requires this once again. So refer to the deed, you need to read the deed, you need to know that deed. But the problem is with dollars, it's very often very difficult for trustees to know exactly what dollars to uh, specify to nominate a beneficiary pre-30 June because obviously we won't, may not have the records finished right on 30 June. There might be some changes. So it's quite often it's uh, the best way is to use the proportionate method or using percentages. You can still name dollar amounts and, and also, or you can do a mix of both. You're not quite just do one or the other. You can allocate certain amounts and nominate a beneficiary to receive any balance as well. The trustee, should they choose, can also confirm at a later date via an additional resolution with reference back to this original pre-30 June resolution of the final dollar amounts. Although this is not a requirement. So, Lightyear Docs Trust Distribution Resolution. How does it meet all of the above? And what's so great about it? It nominates the clauses of the deed that deal with all the areas we've discussed today. Provides the documentation, the evidence we need that an actual resolution has taken place pre-30 June. Allows for the income of the trust to be accounting, tax, trust, or trust income. Allows for the streaming of franked income and capital gains to nominated beneficiaries. And this is a, a, an addition we've added this year after consultation between myself and um, member or members of Lightyear, which is fantastic to have. It's always great to have uh, feedback and uh, some nice to haves or wants, and uh, we've now ensured that uh, it's a lot easier to provide for streaming of ranked income and capital gains on our resolution. It allows the Lightyear Docs document allows for dollars and percentage to be allocated to beneficiaries, and it can be used for any trustee, not just the Lightyear Docs trustee. So from any provider, from any lawyer. So why don't we just jump into the actual process now and have a look at, I've actually already created a one, but I'll just run you through where we go to look for the trust distribution resolution. So we go down to product categories, trust, and discretionary trust distribution minutes. You notice here it says $49. So if you're a PAYG user, you just buy documents uh, when you're acquiring them, then the price will be $49. If you're one of our members, then all documents are included. And unless it's like you protect, it's just, that's just the estate planning documentation. But um, if you're on any, if you're on these memberships over here, so like your firm, like your strategist, those documents will be included. Uh, and you can do as many as you want. If anyone wants to talk, discuss any of the memberships, feel free to reach out to myself. If anyone wants a demo, feel free to reach out to myself. I'll put my details on the screen after we have a look at this. So we go back to product categories, jump into trusts, and we'd start ordering. So we'd go start document. As I mentioned, I won't go through and type all the answers again to slow things down. I've actually already created one, so I can find that in my vault. So all your documents once fin are finished are completed in there. See, my vault will come up. I would then go into I've installed this one in demo. We'll open it up and see that little rocket. That will relaunch that interview that I've already completed. So we'll open this up now. So I've just called the document demo. I've put uh, logo tag as the Abbott and Morley one. Uh, we can have your logo set up. Utilize our, one of our membership services and, um, or you can have it blank, it's up to you. So, before I start going through this, as per my presentation, I need the most important document of all to be able to complete this. I need the trust deed. So, I've got here sitting in the background, my discretionary trust deed for the Smith Family Trust. It's got all the provisions and clauses we need to look at. We jump back over here. So, I'll grab that off the trust deed to ensure we've got the same right name, Smith Family Trust. We'll jump into the trust deed, have a look when the date of the trust was set up. This deed was made the 10th of July, 2019. So it's a 
got a fresh Nui. We can get the trustee from here. So Smith Investments, pre to till once again, our trustee trustee will have all the information we require. Trustee, bang, ACN, registered office address. Punch it all in here. We put the director who's gonna sign. Trustee minute when it's gonna be held. It can be on or before 30 June. So it doesn't have to be 30 June. This year it falls on a Tuesday. So it's a weekday, it doesn't have to be a weekday. If it fell on a Sunday, you can't, there's no reason why you can't have the meeting. But the trustees need to be available as we've noticed up with a point up here to hold an actual meeting. So it can be on a Saturday and Sunday, as long as they're available to hold one. So we'll put where the address where the meeting is held. We could have just like selected the select button and grabbed it from earlier where we've added it in. So we'd have to retype it. Now, this is where it goes through all the necessary clauses and everything. So the first section is in relation to how do we determine the income for the trust. So I've jumped into the trust deed and gone to clauses. I've had a read through it and gone, okay, let's have a look in terms of income. Here we go. 6.1, we didn't need that. 6.2 talks about how the trustee will identify, record and maintain and also the determination of income by the trustee. So I put 6.2 and 6.3. You don't have to just put one clause, you put several if you want. Uh, well, not if you want, but as per the trustee, I should say, you put uh, the actual clauses of the trustee for that. So next section, what deals with different classes of income, so different class income and capital. We saw that just before, it was 6.1 above. So we've got dividends, fully franked, unfranked, foreign tax credits, et cetera, et cetera. We've got capital gains, um, and all the different categories there that are listed on Lightyear Docs Trust Deed. So we've gone back to the interview and that was 6.1, punch that in. Now, if you have any trouble with these, feel free to reach out. We're happy to look at um, the trust deeds and um, hold your hand in terms of um, finding them. Once you sort of get the hang of it, it's quite easy. It's just a matter of reading through the trust deed and understanding uh, the clauses and provisions within there. So the composition and calculation, that was 6.1 as well. Choose ahead. So this is where you can select whether income is calculated as per accounting income or income per the income tax acts. I've selected as per the income tax assessment acts because you can see the deed said related to, it talked about franked uh, distributions and franking credits. Distribution of income. So what clause deals with distribution of income? So once again, jump back into a handy trust deed. I read it earlier and we go up here, it is, 4.1, this talks about discretionary distribution of income by the trustee. Financial year, we're doing this 2020 financial year, so we just punch 2020 in there. Now I've selected our new stick, so we've got dollar amount, percentage or streaming. So this is where you can list beneficiaries. The first section is individual, then companies. We've now added trust beneficiaries, and we've also added charitable entities to distribute it to. So as I'm putting streaming here, I put uh, two of the primary beneficiaries. So Robert Charles Smith and Lisa Wendy Smith, which I can get from my trust deed again. I can go to the last schedule of the trust deed and it will show me here who the trustee is and who our primary beneficiaries are. So I've given 50,000 franc distributions to Robert Charles Smith and 45,000 to Lisa Wendy Smith. I've named a company as a beneficiary, Smith Holdings, I uh, put the ACN in, I've given it $10,000 of franc distributions. Then named a trust as a beneficiary, the Smith Opportunities Trust, put the ABN in, the name of the trustee, and I've given resolve to give $80,000 of capital gains of, to the Smith Opportunities Trust. And then we've named a charitable organisation, which is the Smith Foundation, put a rego number, if the charity is a registered charity, and here I've just put remainder of income. The next section is where we would name a default beneficiary. So this is where there may be a vari variation of income by the ATO. They reviewed, ordered the tax return. Uh, there may be additional information that comes to hand post 30 June and we name, well, we can name a default beneficiary to receive any of this. So here I've named Robert Charles Smith. We go to the trust deed again and I found that was 4.1 and I added in there, which is just our check at the end, see who's the signers, and we finish the document.
I'll just wait for that to pop up. Just taking a bit longer because I'm Zoom. And we download our discretionary trust distribution minutes. Here, see, so you've got all the names, the trustee of the trust goes through the minutes, where they were held, the date, the time, who attended, and goes through and talks about, see, we've put all those clauses in the income of the trust, character of the income, determination of the income, how it's determined, and the proposed or the resolved proposed distribution of income for those nominated beneficiaries. We ratify the actions and the meeting is closed. And we get printed off, send off, or email it off and get our clients to sign it. Jump, jump back to the end of the presentation. Thanks for joining today. Um, as I mentioned before, there are my, all of my contact details. Feel free to reach out via email or via social at any time you want. If you have any questions, if you'd love a demo or you want to find out further about memberships, or even if you have questions about trust distribution or any technical matters, feel free to reach out. Um, we've got a great team and we're ready and here to help. Thanks everyone.